Hello and welcome to yet another video of Boom 11 and today of obviously as the title suggests we are going to be talking about whether or not baseball can succeed in India but before we get into this video do not forget to check out our app which is Boom 11 and it has got a free to play fantasy feature and also if you want to check out our premium contest get into our eShop and get something for yourself and get some brownie points and invest it into the fantasy gaming arena where you can win a lot of premium prices. So without further ado, check that out. The link is in the description. And let's get into today's video. I've Jaren with me joining about today's discussion, obviously. Welcome, Jaren, on the show. But yeah, basketball, whether or not it will it succeed. Now, that's a question which everybody has been talking about for way too long period of time, isn't it, Jaren? But I want to know from you, what do you reckon about this? Do you reckon basketball, that whole horror that's created around the cricketing world, is going to really have that stamp of winning a series in India. And we can, really, you can say that oh, they've succeeded if they win a series in India. Well, you'd have to say that, you know, just looking at the concept of basketball, it's like uh, driving without a helmet on a motorbike when everyone else is uh, riding along in a bullock cart. Uh, the idea is just to play fast and loose. Um, and, you know, somehow post such a total that teams and their plans are disrupted. And it seems to have worked, definitely it seemed to have worked in England. Uh, the stats show it for sure. It also worked in Pakistan. But now the question is that one place, obviously England are the last team to ever beat India mm. in a test series in back in 2012 when uh, it was a completely different generation on yeah. both sides uh, playing, you know. we got the Sachin Tendulkar's, the Alistair mm. Cooks, the Kevin Petersons uh, still playing for their respective countries. But now the question is, is it possible to withstand in conditions as spicy as India, where the ball is going to turn and whether, you know, it's going to be a place where they can actually execute it. Now, one thing I'll definitely say, Bill, is the new ball is something that they can definitely target. You know, the ball yeah. is going to be harder. It's going to be not swing or seam as much. And when that happens in India, you can make hay. You know, you can make hay in that point in time. And then from there on, maybe when the spinners come on, is when uh, probably you have to cause enough damage that the spinners have to be brought on quickly and then probably go after them as well. Good point, which have risen because uh, one of the major things about basketball has been the way in which they've played. But now, I think the debate is, is basketball a very condition-centric approach? Because in England and in Pakistan, as you mentioned, where they've had success, you know, it's primarily because of the conditions what, what's been there in offer, right? Now, we'll just pull out a stat which we'll put up on the screen saying, where they've had most number of success. Now, if you look, they've had 100% success in, in, in Pakistan because they did a whitewash against Pakistan yeah. earlier on, later on in 2022. But after that is what I'm trying to talk about. The time where, you know, they've played in conditions which have been tested or for that matter where things have not really gone their way, they've been slightly jittery. Now, you reckon that's going to be one area of concern for them because I still think they've not been exposed to tougher conditions. In England, they made flat batting surfaces to suit their sort of batting. And Pakistan provided them with flat surfaces as well. But can you say, can this transcend or just, no, can this actually transform a batting in India where they're going to be like approaching the same batting attack or same batting approach they've had? And now they can they have the success? Can it transcend to India? That's my whole point here. I, I still believe it might not because it's not that easy to succeed in India without having a defence. I mean, there's something interesting there, Abel, is the West Indies series, right? Where they did not win anything. Uh, that's the but one you know, place where... This was the start of it, right? West yeah. Indies was very early on. That approach wasn't True. really in sync with the team. I, didn't, I don't yeah, think yeah, they yeah. played basketball in West Indies as well. True, true that. And I think one thing that they definitely also struggle with, Abel, and that's going to be a key, key component, yeah. is the fact that the Pacers couldn't really be effective. Now, their yeah. idea was at that point in time in Test cricket that Jofra Archer is their main baller in overseas conditions yeah. with his pace, his bounce, uh, his line and length and the accuracy that he can bring out and the other ballers will really support. When yeah. Jofra Archer got injured, that really disrupted their plans. And after that, their idea was Chris Vokes is the new ball to cause damage, which he couldn't with yeah. the Kukabura ball on those uh, unresponsive West Indies tracks. Now, when you bat so quickly in Test cricket, they always say in Test cricket yeah, that you bat time and not uh, for runs. And when you bat so quickly in Test cricket, what you also end up inevitably doing is giving your opposition a lot of comfort. Where they have, they can, they, they can go slower than they want to. 
they can be more cautious because by the end of the first day you might have racked up 400 runs but you've also lost your 10 wickets because you've gone at it very rashly which means your opposition has gotten that extra two days that maybe a, 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 an opposition wouldn't get against an australian team yeah. or an indian team who would probably take two days to get to 400 or two and at least one and a half day and that's where it's going to come down to now question is on a pitch like india right now obviously batting quickly helps you when you're batting on green tops um in in a, in a place like maybe england if it's a green top or it's swinging uh, or south africa for that matter where you know you are uh, facing the, the new ball and where you're suffering against a new ball and once the ball gets older it gets easier to bat uh, so yeah. your idea is maybe you don't wait for that long you you know uh, score a lot of runs and then hope to uh, put pressure on the teams right away uh, but yeah. on the other hand in india where conditions take longer and your real advantage is batting in the first innings and you know uh, making sure that you make best out of the situation if you finish ending up uh, on the first day itself then you give your opposition two very good days to bat and then again suddenly you're batting on the third day or I mean, on the fourth day or the third day where the ball starts to turn the question is is that also going to be a concern for uh, england as well when they try the back ball approach yeah that was a huge concern I think there are certain batters who have really been successful in baseball. There are certain batters who really can only play baseball. Now, that is a concerning bet as well because they don't have a secondary approach, especially when it comes to coming into the series. I mean, let's look at the score to start off with because that's where we can drop levels as to what, what are the players who can do it, who are there, and whether can they succeed or not. Now, if you look at the score, they've already got one big injury before the start of the series. That is Harry Brook would be missing out way before the series has even begun. So that is a big blow for them. Dan Lawrence is a player who's going to be replaced. He played a couple of good knocks when last time England toured India. But uh, let's talk with Zach Crawley or Ben Duckett for that matter. Now, Zach Crawley has been susceptible to uh, high quality spin time and time again. He is unsure of how to use his feet. But when it comes to Ben Duckett, he's a player who uses sweep shots a lot more. He's comfortable sweeping. And he likes to take on spin. I mean, he backs himself to take on spin a lot more. You reckon that's a major area for them because I think for England to succeed, they'll want to have their top order do well. That includes the likes of Ben Duckett, that includes the likes of Jack Crowley, Oli Pop for that matter. Oli Pop has had a disastrous tour last time around when England toured India. Uh, he did not really score well. Uh, for that matter, Oli Pop hasn't been in the best of touches in the recent past as well. How do you see that being balanced out in this particular series? Yeah, I mean, uh, while you also men mentioned those names, I mean, those are the team players that did struggle. And this is a generation able that has come out of the Andrew Ross era as well, right? Flat pitches, easier to bat. Uh, you know, you don't really need that kind of technique anymore. You see any of the highlights of uh, county cricket, you'll see flatter tracks where in the olden days or the last time that England won a test match in India, if you had seen those county highlights, you would have seen pitches greener than the uh, outfield. Yeah. So now the question is, and again, another big issue, Abel, is in that era, you had some really, really good spinners in county cricket. You had the likes of Monty Panessa, you had the likes of, uh, you know, Graham Swan. Obviously, they played in that, in that yeah. series. But aside from that, you had some other, uh, you know, Indian origin, Pakistani origin uh, mm -hmm. spinners who were really good at that time. And county yeah. cricket had decent spinners. Now, if you look at county cricket, and if you look at the squad as well, Abel, it shows that in that side, they, these batters are not playing quality spin anymore. And uh, you see a lot of uh, spinners who are bought in for their skills and not yeah. really for the track record, hoping that you know they convert those skills and uh, you convert those skills into performances. So um, now, I think the best bet that Baz McCullum will probably take is hope that the two openers go all guns blazing. Put India under pressure where the spinners are, you know, bought out without yeah. the new ball taking any wickets. When that happens, if they can score maybe 100 odd runs in uh, 20, 22 overs, counter yeah. the likes of Siraj, counter but the likes it of. It isn't Siraj. that easy to score against India's new ball as well. Now, if you look, we exactly. not, let's not write India's fast ballers off. You're going to be facing Bumrah and a Siraj, and not no Shami for the first couple of test matches at least. But when Shami comes back, it's going to be even harder. Mostly it's going to be Shami and Bumrah. Who are equally lethal, in my opinion, as much as what an Ashwin or Jadeja might do. So, you're not facing ordinary fast bowling there. You're not facing an average fast bowling attack who do not know what to do in test cricket, which I saw in Pakistan for that matter. 
Firstly, Pakistan pitches were very unresponsive. On top of that, uh, there was nothing at all for fast bowlers to work with. And the quality of fast bowlers was extremely low. I mean, you can say Shaheen Afridi was a standout. But in that particular series, I thought Shaheen Afridi also had dropped down quite a lot. He was coming up. And I think he missed out matches as well because of the uh, injury, which I don't think Shaheen Afridi played in that test series. Yeah, he did not play in that test series, rather. It was Harris Roth who had a lot of played in that test series. Uh, they did not have their full strength bowling attack there. So... I thought that, that really, really helped them to do well in Asia for that matter. If you're getting that Asian condition which they had dominant, what they did in Pakistan, scoring 100 runs in 20 overs, yeah, that worked in Pakistan. But I think playing in conditions where which are low and slow, which which will also mean fast bowling is going to be tough to get away with because balls start reversing from 15th over for that matter. Ashwin and Jadija will be there uh, from uh, the 8th or 9th over, which is not going to be easy. Let's look at the players, right, who will really do well. Now, we spoke, obviously, about the likes of uh, uh, Ben Duckett, but Joe Root is a big factor here. I mean, we'll talk, look at how what Joe Root has done in Brendan McKellum era and how much he's done against India later on. Now, if you look, there is an interesting stat at the corner of your screen, which is in the right-hand side. There is a strike rate point of view. Obviously, the average has jumped, but with average, strike rate has also jumped. And he's not been... Uh, fearful about the way in which he's been batting. He's ready to go out, to go and play those switch hits. He's ready, he's ready to go out there and play the reverse laps. He's not bothered by it at all. And that's what Brennan McKellen brings. That's an old bass ball. Fearless batting. Take those risky approaches. Take those risky uh, shots. Uh, you know, take those risks. Play those shots. And so be it. If you're getting out, so be it. You might, might just look like an idiot on one of those days when you get out. But it's okay. More often than not, it might just pay off. And that's why you think Joe Root's game has really gone up two notches, especially in this era? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, when you talk about looking like an idiot, I think you're probably referring to that one dismissal he had in the World Cup, where the ball sneaked in between his I think he also had an issue in the Ashes, if I'm not wrong. Pat Cummins. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, uh, but then, you know, what's interesting, Abel, is in this period, now I know Ben Stokes has not been at the top of his power, power for a long time with the bat. Uh, you know, he's also had inconsistent matches as well, but Joe Root is striking at a strike rate higher than Ben Stokes, as yeah, you can see yeah, there on the screen. Yeah. He's only striking at 69. I know it's just a marginal improvement. But if you ask any cricket fan, in fact, if you had asked me till I discovered this stat, I would have said that Ben Stokes is probably striking higher. But that's just how he has been. And I think another really uh, interesting thing about Joe Root is, I think under Chris Silverwood, that towards the end of that era, he was struggling a little bit when it came to all three formats. And, uh, you know, his place in T20 team had gone off for a long a long time back. But even his yeah. place in one day was being questioned. He was not really... He was having a horrid time as well as a captain. I know there's a lot of other factors. But under under Brendan McClellan, he's really turned things around. And last year, he's had a test cricketer of an year kind of worthy uh, I mean, performance. He's been England's yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, cornerstone. He's, he's also been rotating strike. And what he's done really well, Abel, is... Even he scored those fancy boundaries, like you mentioned. Yeah. But the old uh, Joe Root had an issue where the first 20 25 balls he would just get stuck on the crease, not really rotate, strike, look to you know solidify yeah. himself, and then uh, you know go after the balling or not after the balling, but then start playing his knock. Yeah. But right now, you see him starting to score from ball one. You probably see him, you've seen him score six of the first ball with a scoop in test cricket now. That's where he's yeah. come to, and that's really going to be important because. Joe Root, I mean, I know we're talking about basketball particularly, but Joe Root is such a key player in this team. I mean, that's both the biggest of a coach instilling that mindset and belief in him that you can go out there and do it. It's okay yeah. to look like an Indian on certain days. And that really helps. That that particular you know, approach or that particular mindset with which you go out there to bat, that really matters the most in my opinion. And that culture yeah. in the dressing room, right? You have Ben Stokes, a captain who's ready to go out there and show it. And that also instills belief on players like Joe Root, who was very conventional, who had his you know, roots uh, for Root very much uh, <laughs> within himself, you know, where he, he was known as the most technically sound player, classically very correct, technically yeah. very correct, uh, who would not play those reverse ramps. Though he used to do it in T20 form of the game, but not definitely in test cricket, right? He was known for his correctness in batsmanship. But then that's what Brendan Mitchell has changed. That's what he's brought about the change. He's brought in that belief and if you look at it you know they've been one of the most successful test teams in the last uh you know if you look uh, they've been more successful than australia or india for that matter and that's one of the primary reasons why they've been competing for wdc though wdc's are we've had debates on how it's not the best 
mode or the best form to judge a team's performance because percentage points, a lot of these come into play. If you lose a couple of matches, your percentage points really go down. But let's be honest, England have been by far one of the best teams on show in this particular WTC cycle under basketball. And especially the comeback in Ashes was the highlight of it all. Yeah, I mean, um, I think they do claim the moral victory for it uh, as far as I remember. But, uh, you know, you'd have to say that uh, England did fight back. And that was one of the most memorable Ashes series in a long time. And I think Ashes had kind of, the last two Ashes had kind of become one-sided. Yeah. But then, or at least it had become Australia-sided for a while. Even when Australia visited England, England mm-hmm. lost at home, which is not something that anyone yeah. wanted to see. But here, they really fought back. And... Um, I think one, one more thing that they've really done is, I think that Pakistan win will really give them a lot of cre- uh, confidence. Yeah. Now, I know people will talk about the flat pitches in Pakistan, which is a different problem altogether. But you would have to say that for England to come to Asia, play in that heat and do that kind of high intense cricket that they have played throughout. Because basketball is not easy. I mean, one of the I things... I think the last was, match in Pakistan where they won was in yeah. slightly a turning wicket. It was not yeah. the usual Pakistan wicket what you've been getting in, the, in these days, which is flat and which is easier to score runs. But the last match, which I remember, had a lot of turn. That's where Rihanna Ahmed came into play, picked up five wicket yeah. ball, if I remember, and he had a fantastic game that time around. So what has happened is that particular approach of England in the recent bus we enabled them to, you know, play well in conditions just slightly more tougher. I remember one of the games in New Zealand as well, uh, where the conditions were swinging around quite a bit. But Harry Brook and other lads went out there, swung their bats around. Though one of the matches they lost by the barest of margins, but other ones, you know, they were, the other match which they won was, was really good. They really imposed themselves on New Zealand. So, I think so far, they look like a team to beat. And uh, I think one man is going to play a key factor. It's going to be with Johnny Bear. So, he's been a match winner for them in this yeah. season. I mean, absolutely. Uh, I think till Sil- Chris Silverwood, they had written off uh, Johnny Bear as a test player. They had uh, they felt like he had the talent in him. In fact, I think if I remember correctly, he had come in as a test player and then he was later on, later on became a white ball expert under uh, Silverwood and Bayless. But McCallum really gave him that freedom and all of a sudden you saw him become one of those. Uh, I think in fact, if you really have to talk about the impact of Bass Ball, you also have to talk about other countries as well. There have been batters who are coming up who have become, you know, who, are con- who would have been considered uh, a white ball specialist before Bass Ball suddenly become those test batters who come out, come in and uh, whack a few, yeah? And yeah. Uh, their idea is to just play those impactful knocks, not really play the time, but score uh, in a way that you disrupt the opposition's plans. And uh, definitely, Bairstow is one of them. Look at the jump in the strike rate. He's gone 30 clicks higher. And that is just, uh, you know, pushed his average as well. But having said that, Bairstow has had a few difficult months now leading up to this test series. He's really not... Uh, you know, not contributed in the white balls, uh, in the white with the white ball as well. Neither has he done it in the red ball for a while now. And there are, if you look at the squad as well, Abel, there are a few backup keepers. And I think one of them is Ben Fox, who was really considered at a point in time before Bairston, uh, Bairston's uh, resurgence. He's a better keeper than Ben, ben Stoke. Uh, yeah. and I personally think he might be just given the nod ahead as well. If precisely, and he's yeah, done decently yeah. well. If you remember, he played some uh, some really good knocks. If I remember in Ahmedabad, one of those turning pitches, and he was he looked very gritty in my opinion. And I think that's going to really help him. If you look in the long run as well, if England have to look at that particular perspective in Asian conditions, yeah, so be it. I mean, I think it can give you a lot more in terms of a wicket keeping uh, ability. What we're talking about, he can keep on a rank turner. And he's very gritty with the bat. He might not really suit your basketball approach, but it's not bad having at least one of those batters who's extremely gritty and other players can play around him. So he's a batter who can stay out, stay out there for 70, 80 balls and fight it out for a good 30, 30 or 25. And that's something which you would need uh, in Indian conditions. And I still believe that you can play as quick as you want, but you still need a good defense at the end of the day because if you're going for that one centric approach, you know, in turning pitches, you might be found out very well because you can't play through the line, which you've been doing in England in the recent past. And your technique against spin is going to be tested a lot because that's a technique which you, is, which you would be really tested because technique against spin is totally different from playing uh, you know, cross-padded shots or playing through the line. And that's about it for our podcast for today. 
Thank you all for joining us. And if you really did like this video, don't forget to share and subscribe to our channel. And if you're new here, don't forget to check out uh, the Boomer 11 app, which is available on Apple App Store and also Google Play Store. As I mentioned, you can play our premium contest in Boomer 11 by purchasing something on e on our eShop where you can get some points and invest it on our premium contest where you can win a lot of prices. So this is your opportunity. Don't miss out. Have a good time, all of you. See you all very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.